Discover the exquisite beauty of Islam with our exclusive poster collection showcasing the 99 names of Allah. Each poster meticulously presents the Arabic name, pronunciation and English translation, embodying the essence of our Creator. Elevate your surroundings with these high-quality designs that not only serve as art, but also offer a glimpse into the profound beauty of Islamic culture. Immerse yourself in the collection and unveil the magnificence of the 99 names. Links in the description box. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, super viral topic at the moment, the red heifer. Israel wants to allegedly sacrifice a red cow to bring forth Armageddon. So pretty much everybody in the Muslim world is talking about the red cow now and how it's supposed to be sacrificed. Moreover, potentially Al-Aqsa Mosque being destroyed. And all of this allegedly yet again is supposed to usher in the Jewish Messiah. Guys, before we jump into the video, as always, if you enjoy my work, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out the links in the description box to further support. And now, with no further ado, let's have a look. Could a Texas cow start Armageddon in the Middle East in April 2024? And what does this have to do with Israel's war on Palestine's Gaza? On the 100-day anniversary of Israel's brutal assault on Gaza, Hamas spokesman Abu Ubaidah released a video explaining the motivations behind the group's incursion into Israel on October 7th. Alongside Israel's continued occupation of Palestine, he also mentioned the bringing of red cows into the occupied Palestinian territories. Ubaidah was referring to the plans of numerous right-wing Israeli groups who believe dancing, that no? a red cow must be sacrificed in order for the Jews to progress plans to demolish the Al-Aqsa Mosque and exactly. built the fabled Third Temple in its place. It might sound like a conspiracy theory, but hardliner Israeli group the Temple Institute have already purchased and imported five red Angus heifers from Texas at a cost of $500,000. They have been grazing in a kibbutz in the occupied West Bank since 2022, with reports that the sacrifice is planned to take place as early as April 2020. So the sacrifice of the red heifer has its roots in the Torah and the Talmud, and it is believed that the rich ritual is necessary to purify the Jews so that they can pray at the Al-Aqsa compound. The sacrifice will reportedly take place on a plot of land on the Mount of Olives facing the Al-Aqsa Mosque. The cow must be completely red, including its hooves, and must be around three years old at the time of sacrifice. Following the sacrifice, the ashes of the cow are due to be mixed with water and used to purify selected Jewish priests and their adherents. I have to stop the video right here because what you can see in the background is quite creepy. They're making hand gestures. If you know anything about occult knowledge, you will recognize those gestures. This guy over here, he's making the horn sign for Lucifer. He's giving you the hand gesture for the horned one, for Satan ultimately. And the other guy right here, he is showing you the pyramid. The pyramid is used by Freemasons and other secret societies. The meaning behind it is an elite group that is on top and is ruling everything. If you know anything about Judaism, of course you would recognize that those people truly believe that they are higher than everybody else, that they are superior, racially speaking, spiritually speaking even. There are certain theories that the Jewish soul is superior and has a divine connection to God that we, Goyim, do not have. And therefore, this is a clear display yet again of Jewish supremacy, of Jewish superiority. Used to purify selected Jewish priests and their adherents. Since occupying East Jerusalem in 1967, right-wing Zionists have long sought to build a third temple in place of the Al-Aqsa Mosque. Exactly. Right. While initially the goal only of fringe groups such as the Temple Institute, the plan has been mainstreamed in recent years, with groups of settlers regularly storming the Muslim compound and attracting support from numerous politicians and commentators. Temple organizations have even submitted blueprints for the construction of the temple. And all you have to do is count one and one together, of course, even if you don't believe in prophecy and you don't believe that this has some sort of spiritual meaning to sacrifice the red cow, 
just by sacrificing the red cow and then proceeding to destroy Al-Aqsa Mosque, one of the holiest sites within Islam, of course you will usher in war. You will usher in an end of day scenario if you will. Because up until now, it has been very disappointing, of course, to see that the Muslim world, the Ummah, did not truly stand up for the people of Palestine. Since I reverted to Islam, this has been a huge frustration of mine to see that the big Muslim powers, the governments, do not truly help out. However, if, God forbid, of course, Al-Aqsa Mosque is destroyed, then quite literally all hell would break loose, of course. Then the governments would have to stand up and all the Muslims around the globe would have to get up as well. And this would then inevitably lead to a war. So yet again, even if you don't believe in a prophecy, this then in turn would of course be a self-fulfilling prophecy. Compared to the ornaments it will hold. Last year, during the month of Ramadan, a temple movement activist was arrested after he and a group of Jewish extremists attempted to bring a goat into the Al-Aqsa compound for a ritual sacrifice. The decades-long Israeli excavations under the Al-Aqsa Mosque have also been condemned by international archaeologists and denounced by numerous authorities who say they are a means of weakening the foundations of the mosque to facilitate its demolition. If Israel were to attempt to demolish the Al-Aqsa Mosque, the third holiest site in Islam, it would trigger outrage across the Arab and Muslim world. Of course. However, even if these right-wing Jewish groups are unable to proceed with the demolition, many fear that the sacrifice itself could embolden Jewish extremists to occupy the mosque and further restrict the rights of Palestinians to access the holy site. All right, this was somewhat of a mainstream report, if you will. This came from TRT World. Now we're going to check out the merciful servant for deeper insight. In September 2022, five red heifers were flown from the state of Texas into the occupied lands. They paid around $100,000 okay, so for each cow. Some time ago. Since last year, one of these cows have been disqualified, but the other four cows continue to be suitable candidates for the sacrifice. To better understand what this ritual is, we must look at what is stated in their scripture regarding it. In the book of Numbers chapter 19, it is stated that, and the Lord spoke to Moses and to Aaron, saying, This is the ordinance of the law which the Lord has commanded, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, that they bring you a red heifer without spot, wherein oh, is no blemish, and upon which never came yoke. Yes. And you shall give her to Eleazar the priest, that he may bring her forth without the camp. And one shall slay her before his face, and Eleazar the priest shall take of her blood with his finger, and sprinkle of her blood directly before the tabernacle of the congregation seven times and one shall burn the heifer in his sight, her skin and her flesh, and her blood with her dung shall he burn. And the priest shall take cedar wood and hyssop and scarlet and cast it into the midst of the burning of the heifer. That's so the hilarious. Red heifer. A little side tangent here, but I have to think about Christians and how they proclaim, oh, we're in continuity with the Old Testament. Yeah, are you truly? The Old Testament is obviously Jewish. So the Jews continue with this type of animal sacrifice to this very day. The Christians, on the other hand, do not. They say this has been abolished. But the Jews, the people that received that scripture or altered that scripture, depending on which view you take, they're still adhering to that animal sacrifice. So you would assume, of course, that the people that have ownership of those scriptures ultimately would know what continuity in that sense means. However, yet again, if you really want to be in continuity with that scripture, you should keep on sacrificing animals at the altar. The red heifer is a female bovine which has never been pregnant or milked or yoked, also known as the red cow. Yeah, it was brought cow, to the basically. priests as a sacrifice according to the Torah, and its Torah ashes were used stuff. for ritual purification. According to their rabbis, since the time of Moses, only nine red heifers have been sacrificed. The last time one was sacrificed was just before the second temple was destroyed by the Romans on the Mount of Olives opposite to the Temple Mount. According to their rabbis, when the tenth cow is to be sacrificed, they will enter into the age of Dajjal. Is but to them, said? he will be their awaited Messiah. Yeah, exactly. They wouldn't call the him Dajjal. The Temple Institute is preparing for this event to take place soon. After the sacrifice takes place, you will see an unprovoked attack against Al-Aqsar like never before. Their intentions are utter destruction, to the point in which they can commence building the Temple of Dajjal on top of the ruins of Al-Aqsar. 
They believe once the third temple is completed, it will speed up the coming of their Messiah. Known to Muslims as the Dajjal, who will deceive the entire world, except those who have true faith in their Creator. The true believers will see through the deception and lies and will not be manipulated. It is clear that the end times are getting closer, and the solution is to connect with our Creator unlike ever before. Once the connection is established, the guidance will come from the source of all guidance. Inshallah. All right, this is it for today's video. On the one hand, you could say, well, this is all scary stuff. We will see if all of this will happen first and foremost. But if it does, I personally am truly at peace with it. Because as a believer, I believe in the end times. And looking around, I really wonder how more degenerate the world can become. I don't think we have much more room left for further devolution into obscurity. Humans are as lost and ungrateful as ever. This truly is reminiscent of the stories of Sodom and Gomorrah. Therefore, if this is supposed to be the end times, I don't want to sound all doom and gloom, but I'm actually quite welcoming of it. I mean, honestly, think about it. If we're truly in the last chapter, so to speak, if we truly made it until the end of days, what a great honor that is. Anyways, before I leave you guys, I want to show you one banner that has been posted by a Jewish right-wing party. And they are calling as well for the destruction of the dome, apparently. So the way that this looks like is not about the total destruction of Al-Aqsa Mosque, but nevertheless, it is about the destruction of the dome. And this here, of course, could further escalate tensions and ultimately lead to the destruction of Al-Aqsa. But be that as it may, ultimately, those are the plans of the Zionists. And we all know they planned and Allah planned as well. And Allah is the best of planners. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Check out the links in the description box to further support. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace. <laughs> Oh